Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and this is one of those rare occasions where another lock company has sent me a lock to do some uh, testing on, um, a review on if you like. And this is an Apex AP cylinder, and Apex sent me a little letter, and I'm not going to read all of it out, but I'll read you the salient paragraphs. It says, Hi Lock Noob, first we'd like to thank you for taking time to create the Apex AP cylinder review last year. So last year I actually did a, uh, a picking video of the previous version of this cylinder. Um, it was okay, it wasn't a particularly hard pick though. It says, we watched your video on our old AP design and took into account the comments you made around our anti-pick features. We took this on board and show our commitment to improving cylinder security, we spent some time designing new anti-pick pins. Um, so yeah, so that the, you know you can see that this is an anti-pick, anti-bump, anti-drill, anti-snap, um, and apparently anti-plug extraction um, protection. Um, but you know it's really nice that they um, saw somebody picking this and thought, yeah, do you know what? We can introduce some um, better anti-pick features. It says, please note that these are samples, and the new anti-pick pin designs have not been implemented in production yet. We hope to do this in the near future, but due to the nature of mass manufacture, implementing changes takes time. We welcome feedback and input from you and the wider lock support community. Please let us know your thoughts. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, do comment on this video, comment about this lock below. Um, because what I like is uh, lock manufacturers reaching out to people in the lock picking lock support community, not just me, of course, but you know the, the wider community for feedback about the anti-pick features. It has to be said, that I don't think lock picking is a particularly common attack vector for criminals, and that's why these features on the lock are probably um, just as if not more important than the uh, anti-pick. And I'm not going to test any of the anti-bump, anti-drill, anti-snap, or anti-plug um, pulling, because I don't do destructive testing here, and it's not my area of expertise, so I can't, I, well, at least I don't feel that um, I'm in a position to really comment about those, but I can, as an experienced lock picker, comment about its anti-pick features. And I think it's nice that they've uh, made some changes to the pins in this lock to make them harder to pick. Now, what's interesting is Apex sent me two of these, they're both keyed alike, and I chose the brass one because it's brass and I just think it looks a bit nicer than the full chrome one which you see on the packet. Um, that's the only reason I chose it. Like I said, it's pinned um, exactly alike. And what's really, really sweet is that um, uh, Apex have actually put my logo uh, on the lock and lock noob on the keys, which I, I really, really, really appreciate. I think that's really, really good. So yeah, um, like I said, I think it's nice if more lock companies did this sort of thing. Um, yes, it gets them a little bit of exposure, sure, but it also allows, uh, I think, the lock picking community and uh, people who are interested in locks in general or interested in purchasing locks, it shows that lock companies are interested in bettering what they offer. And I think that's on balance, it's only got to be a good thing to offer better security. Anyway, like I said, we're not going to be looking at all the destructive things. Uh, we are just looking at the lock picking. But the one thing I would say is interesting is that there is a um, a little pin in the cam which will fire if this uh, front part of the lock is ever snapped off. Now clearly this is a whole anti-snap hardened um, piece of metal in the middle, but if you did manage to snap uh, the front of this lock off, uh, that says external, so it'd be this part, um, then there's a little pin in the cam which will disable the cam and stop the whole thing from uh, being able to rotate. So yeah, it even has a, a pretty funky um, anti-snap feature in there. So yeah, cool. Anyway, let's throw this in a vise and have a little bit of a pick. We'll gut it, we'll have a discussion, and uh, yeah, see you in a second. So it popped a bit of autofocus on here, but um, just so that you know it, it won't move around as I'm picking the lock. But let's have a look at this key. So you can see that this is a, a five pin key. We've got um, some pretty good bitting on this actually. So got some um, high cuts, medium cuts, very high cuts, very low cuts. This might be a maximum adjacent cut and then sort of um, a medium cut. We've got this laser track here where we have three or four sliders. I've not gutted this, um, so I don't know. And it's worth just noting, can you see this cam? If you pick the lock and you don't pick up the cam, uh, essentially what will happen is that if it was in a door, the door wouldn't open. So I need to have this nice long turning tool, 
which go down into the keyway and you can see it spring back. That's because it's pushing um, a sort of like a button into the cam mechanism. And that's what the tip of the key would normally do. And that would allow you to pick up the cam. In terms of picking it, I've got a couple of tools. I've got a flat flag and a curved flag. Um, they will get me deep into the pins in the center. And then I have a just a broken um, blank, which will be able to hopefully um, rock open the sliders on the side. So um, given that's where we are at the moment, I think we probably need to start picking it. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna like super rush through this. I'm just gonna try and explain what I'm feeling um, as I pick it. So here's a flat flag, I'm gonna pick the pins in the middle. So gonna go in first and already pin one's binding heavily. Can you hear this? You hear that snap? So into a very light full set, um, we're leaning, oh, and hit two, and again, just into a very light full set. Um, back to the back, okay, so pin one, pin two, springy, pin three, pin four, binding. Hear that click again, very loud, very feedbacky, and uh, we just progress into a bit of a deeper full set there. So again, just testing pin one, um, pin two, in three, four, and five. So I don't know, but I, I suspect that we're pretty much ready. Oh, that's pin two again. Pin three, do you hear, do you see that? Uh, pin three now, and again, there's really good counter rotation. So these feel are feeling a lot like spools at the moment. Um, that's pin four and pin five at the back. Um, I think that's okay. So let me just test these pins now. So did you see that counter rotation again? Lots of nice spools in there. Um, I'm not getting any feedback. All the pins feel springy, which in a dimple lock like this can mean that we're picked, but we're resting on the uh, sliders. So I'll just get this. Uh, broken lock pick and slide that down uh, the lock behind where all the sliders are and just gently uh, just turn the sliders and there we go we have an open now what you'll see is that well we'll turn it this way you'll see that the cam will turn like this so um, we definitely picked up the cam it's definitely going to open the door it's fully picked and I'm just going to turn it all the way back like that and take off that autofocus. And hopefully um, we can uh, then gut the lock. Now, this is something I've not done. So um, I have an idea about how you do this. And that is um, from the information I was given to stop this from firing the anti snap cam is uh, to gently remove this side first, which will relieve the pressure in the center. So that's not the side we picked. We picked the external side. Um, we picked the external side because obviously that's the side which would normally be in a door. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to drop these screws out and keep that whole cam assembly in its place. There we go, right, I'm just gonna gently take that off and pop that here. So you can see um, sort of that button there, that's what this, that's what this piece of metal pushes against, that's what the key or the tip of the turning tool would uh, push against. So yeah, is that all locked up? It is, that's good. Right, let's grab a circlip uh, remover tool and see if we can't get this off. There we are, that's quick. And then we will use a key and a follower and a shim because I've got no idea what to expect in here, really. So yeah, let's pop this shim down the bottom if I can. And then we'll grab a, a nice solid follower and we'll push this through oh there's a sidebar at the top which is nice and we'll pop that there 
pop the shim down here. And yes, those are the pins. So I'm a bit of an idiot and didn't think about where the pins are, but that's pin one. Um, I'll just pop these out at one at a time. Pin oh, two. No, that's pin three, that's pin two. Getting the right way around. Oh, we have uh, some solid anti-drill key pins here in steel and some brass ones. Um, and they look like they've got little serrations on the key pins too. That's so cool. I wasn't expecting that. That's nice. Uh, that is the sidebar. We'll just pop that out if we can. And there should be a couple of little springs. So the sidebar is what recesses into the, um, these are the sliders here. Let's see if we can get a bit of focus on for you. Uh, so there is, these are the uh, sliders. They're obviously in their pick position. You can see that they have a gate here. Um, if I was to remove the key, you can see how that some of those sliders move to close that gate up. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll just, um, Drop some of these things out, and we'll pop these little springs out as well. Oh, that's 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 a slider. Uh, that's one. So there were four sliders. That's cool. Um, let's see if I can just turn these little springs for the sidebar. No, they don't want to come out. I'm not going to force them. Um, there is. So these are sprung sidebar pins as well. Oh, sorry. I just noticed we're out of focus there. There we go. That's three, four, oh, and there's the spring. Okay, so don't want to lose those. Let's see if we can tip those springs out. I think that's really it. I don't know where the other springs have gone. Um, maybe they flung themselves out and I need to find them somewhere else. Um, huh. Or are they in there? No, I think they're in there. They are in there, they just don't want to come out. There we go. That's one. That's two. And then we got a. Uh, those my tweezers. Get those out of the way. Got this other little sidebar spring there, which is the same as this. They all look very similar, actually. Maybe they are all the same, which would be good. And um, yeah, that's the sliders. They're kind of cool. There are the key pins. We'll have a look at those in a second. Let's disassemble. I will take out the springs as well to see, because sometimes they have different steel and brass ones, um, which can, can be an anti-bump feature. And we'll talk about um, the pins in here as well. That's spring for that one. That's spring for that one. Oh, there we go. Then that's that spring, and that's that spring there. Okay, good stuff. Nice. All right. Uh, nothing else going on inside there, so put that away, and we can have a look at the. Um... Oh, come on! My focus is going all over the shop today. There we go. So this is really nice. We have some anti-drill pins here. Um, we'll have a look at these serrated pins. So these are all alternating in um, uh, steel springs, which is really nice. Then we've got some serrated, here you go, serrated key pins on the longer ones, which is really nice. So they're like an overset trap. What will happen is if you overpick the pin, it'll go into this serration and it won't drop down unless you relieve a significant amount of pressure, which will mean that you'll drop any picked pins. And then we've got these very nice sort of serrated spools. And again, I did get some information about these. Um, in that, they can either be put this way up and at serrated pins, or this way up, and it's randomized during pinning in manufacture, and this way up, and, or it's, and it's a spool. So I think that's really nice. You get a combination of both the serration and the spool pin all in one pin. Um, very, very nice indeed. Um, so yeah. Uh, what did I think to this lock? It's definitely 
um, a slightly harder pick than its predecessor. Uh, it's an, it's quite enjoyable from a lot picking perspective, and I can feel the serrations and the spools. They're they're deep enough that you can feel that counter rotation. Um, it's got nice feedback, and I really like these serrated overset trap key pins as well. So, yeah, I think that um, Apex have done a, a you know a good job at addressing some of their anti-pick um, uh, features to make an improvement in terms of anything that I, you know, without them redesigning the whole lock, okay? Um, anything which I can suggest to Apex if they were ever going to uh, have time to incorporate more change in this generation or think about the next generation, um, I would say that if we could have false gates in the sliders here, then you get false gates in these sliders. Um, if there's room for them, then uh, that would be really, really good. I don't know if there is much room in here for a false gate, some kind of serration, anything really, just to uh, make it harder to jiggle open the sliders. That would be really, really good. The other thing is the serrations felt really nice, but I was thinking, if possible, um, deeper spooling. Uh, would make this a bit trickier going to a deeper full set not to say that the full sets weren't already quite deep they were actually pretty good but you know like every, there's always room for improvement with pretty much anything so if I had to choose two things it'd be some form of um, anti pick or anti jiggle on the sliders and maybe some deeper spooling otherwise it's actually a pretty good uplift from the previous generation of the um, AP cylinder. So thank you to Apex for sending this to me and, uh, you know, for, you know, really going back and thinking about how they might improve some security features of their locks. I think it's really cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, sorry about the uh, weird focus issues on this. Um, sometimes when you turn the, <laughs> the autofocus off, it, it just doesn't go back on properly. But I need to keep all of this sort of in one shot. But if you have any comments about the video, the lock, anything like that, please drop them below. Um, and of course, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you like the video, leave a like, and I'll see you all next time.